Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out the most insane personal collection of coral I have ever seen. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reef, and this episode is gonna be a big one, so get yourself comfortable, get a drink, and maybe even a snack, because I recently flew up to Sydney to check out Michael and Joe's personal coral collection, and let me tell you, it is a big one. There is no shortage of coral and no shortage of absolute jaw-dropping pieces to check out, and we are gonna go through every single piece that they have in their facility, so, um, I'm not sure what else I can say to preface this video other than to say that if you do like any of the coral you see throughout this video, stay tuned right to the end because there is a big announcement which might be of interest, particularly for those who are Australian reefers. I don't know if I can add much more than that other than to let's roll the footage and go check out the incredible collection that Michael and Joe have procured. All right, we're here at Michael and Joe's house of absolute coral madness here. And uh, Michael's mic'd up, he's gonna take us through the facility. Just pan across to the side here, cause I'm up on a little bit of a ledge here where we get this awesome bird's eye view of the corals. Firstly, thank you so much for uh, welcoming me into your home and uh, showing both myself and all of the viewers these incredible corals you have here. It's, um, it's gonna be a video cause we've got a bit to cover, yeah. so. Um, Let's, let's jump down into it, man. Let's, ha let's start having a look at these tanks. Tell cool. us a bit about them and um, how this happened. <laughs> well, we've got three systems here. This one's the LPS system. Yes. Um, and it's just corals on top of corals at the moment. Corals so. on top of corals, corals, <laughs> corals in the sump as well. And um, <laughs> no shortage of pieces. Yeah. <laughs> just a scully stash in the sump. <laughs> well, let's, let's start right at this end here. For starters, this is a custom build tank, yeah? Correct, yes. Yeah, what sort of size is this beast? It's a... 13 foot. 13 <laughs> feet of yeah. uh, just reefing magic. And um, the first thing I noticed when I, when I walked down here was something you don't see very often anymore, but an absolutely cracking bit of gear is the sea swirls you've got on each of these tanks just to uh, have that return outlet just vary a little bit yeah. and um, just create the nice sort of random flow patterns and just, just to try and replicate that uh, nature as much as possible, I guess. But before I get hooked up and caught up on any sure. sort of um, any sort of uh, equipment on it. We, we've got to start looking at these corals, man. Okay, okay. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I'll be here all week. So <laughs> let's, let's start here. We've got some pretty crazy bower bankies just uh, chilling up on here. I, I see some, uh, this one particularly here, this guy. Wow, look at the colors through him. Reds, golds, greens, little splash of purple, and then he's got a little uh, frag there. A little oh, frag, man. Whew. How many heads? We've got two, three, that four, five, six, seven, head. eight. It grew from one head. You've yeah. got eight heads there now, so I wouldn't call that a frag anymore. That, it may have started life as a frag, but that's a uh, full blown colony now. And this piece here, that's nice too. This, uh, I was gonna, oh, it's, a, it's a gold, isn't it? It's a really nice, vibrant orange with teal eyes on it. Beautiful piece. And then you've got some blaster colonies in there too, just. Awesome variety of those. Yeah, those are the blast and mothers before they've been fragged, so just sitting away. Okay, nice, nice. Well, that is a little hint at what's to come. There <laughs> might be some more blasto frags to come here, but um, maybe before we jump into the craziness of these hammers, euphilias, and um, scullies, t tell us, man, what? How does this happen? How does one convert their uh, garage into a space like this? What sort of uh, reefing juice have you been on to get this enthusiastic and uh, motivated to build this in your house? Oh, it's an addiction. So, <laughs> and to put it kind of, um, this is the third tank setup that we've had in three years. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. yep, yep. So, so you've done the classic upgrade. You start with one size tank, quickly upgrade to the next, and correct, then before and then you know it, your, your garage is taken over. So the funny thing is the turning point was actually an event held by you. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So all the way back in the day, Fragstock. Yeah, love Fragstock. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah, that was a How huge event. How many years event. ago would be that? That was maybe oh, two and a half, three no, years ago? much more than that. Okay. I reckon uh, it would have been uh, maybe 2019 even, so maybe like okay, four, four years. Four, four yeah. years ago, yep, yeah. Yep. So precisely remember at that time we had a little booth. Yes. And that was the first event that we met a lot of other reefers. Yeah, yep. And um, it just got us hooked. And I remember <laughs> that night with Joe, my yes, wife. Yes. 
we were still talking in bed until about four or five o'clock in the morning, yeah, just wow. how excited we were. We sold some ten dollars dollar frags and yeah, we're like, yeah. this is my plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've got some explaining to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what's led to this. <laughs> so back then we had a five foot tank and yes. that was it, just in the living room. Yep. You guys had some cracking stuff though, I remember. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. I mean, pieces. Yeah, no, it, it was good, but yeah, it was yeah. nowhere kind of. It wasn't quite the size yeah, facility correct, that we're looking yeah. at today. Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. And then after that, that was the one tank. Then we added on two more tanks linked yes. to that one. And then we got another water box. And it was just, yeah, tank after tank after tank. And I guess as you got more into corals, knew more people in the industry, yes. then it just became more fun after that. Fair call, fair call. Well, that's. Yeah. That's a crazy journey. I know it's it's a pretty common path for people to go through, um, you know, the upgrades and the, the the next step in the hobby. But I mean, it would be fair to say you've gone to a another, <laughs> another level here. And I mean, it's a perfect segue to then come and have a look at some of the euphilia you've got in yeah. this system here. I mean, and I, I was going to is... start over here looking down, but then I noticed this rack up here with them yeah. just stacked in there, and these are all some high high end pieces. Look at the colours on those. If the green is showing anything other than yellow, look at this thing here, man. Like these pieces over here are what I would traditionally call yellow. We've got some yellow models there. Even these are, I'm gonna to say toxic green, but they're more a uh, lemon lime. You've got some nice yellow stems on this blue guy here. Some nice little gold stems with some yellow models there. You've got this beautiful, dare I say, holy grail. So that one was them. on reef builders that particular It's a reef right? builders yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll get some, be sure to get some uh, close ups of that on screen so everyone can check that out. That's one of the nicest hammers people will see. But then you come across to this bad boy here. This uh, gold tipped hammer is, well, yellow tipped hammer is something to behold. It's an incredible showpiece that uh, just. It, it's ridiculous to think that a hammer that could be featured right there on uh, reef builders and be one of the nicest hammers I've ever seen can be kind of outdone by the piece right next to it, which is, it's not easy to take uh, the words out of my mouth, but uh, that, that is doing it. And then just to add extra uh, salt to the wound, you come across this frog spawn here that, um, I'll see if I can get some footage from the top down. The colors in that are so, so nice. There is green, there is gold, there is pink, and it's just all modeled throughout. Just one of the craziest frog spawns I've seen. Next to it here is your uh, high-end frog spawn that you would normally see with the very, very rich green with those beautiful contrasty purple tips. And uh, that piece next to it is just, just ridiculous, man. How, how does one go about collecting this number and this quality of euphilia in, in just one portion of one of your tanks? I mean, just... Just being, yeah, just being an addict. Anytime anything <laughs> comes up, it's like, yep, no need to have it. Uh, those frog spawns were actually from pet quarters yeah, at yep. Stock. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yep. and I remember lining up, and as the doors <laughs> open, one minute, bam, just be like, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. take that one, that one, that awesome. one. So, yeah. They definitely have some good stock there, and it's awesome to see no. it doing well and um, looking its absolute best. Yeah. And also, as you go through the tank, it's just certain phases that we've had when it came of to course. reefing. So for a while there, it was like just really into hammers. Yes. Yep. So it was just any hammer, Man, we just, yeah. It's good to know. I mean, regardless of whether you've got multiple large tanks like this holding crazy amounts of coral, or whether you've just got a small nano at home, we all go through phases where we just have a particular species that we ride and die for. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, maybe something else will tempt you into a different species down Correct. the line. And I'm sure we'll see that as we go around. But um, <laughs> Man, there's some nice euphilia in there, and I don't want to skip past this this guy here. He's just got this gold sort of fleck through him as well. I'll be sure to get some close-ups of that. He's got gold stems, toxic green and purple models. You got looks like a um, is this a frag of of another mother colony? No, in it was that? by itself. It was by itself, yeah. single yeah. head. Man. So both of those we got very very small. Yes. In that, yeah. Craziness, absolutely crazy. Isn't that like I touched on before the stuff that's up here on the rack? I mean, we've turned the flow off and they've just had to sink back down a little bit <laughs> with the flow off the water levels just dropped a little bit. And even this poor guy up here is just he's, out uh, of the water. he's breaching the <laughs> surface, so we'll be sure to get him back under the water soon. But man, it's it's difficult to know where to look. There's some just absolutely crazy pieces. And I mean, you touched on um, that. Uh, oh, look at the yellow on that. Ridiculous. You touched on that uh, you picked up some of these pieces from uh, Reef Stock. Um, 
Where, anywhere else you frequent to find pieces like oh, of this just, caliber? Yeah, just any anywhere else. Uh, yeah, if it's doesn't matter if it's Brisbane yep, or Melbourne, yep. just yeah. Not afraid to go to the airport to pick no. up a yeah, no. <laughs> showpiece coral. Airport runs like once a week. It's pretty standard. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got to feed that addiction. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Any pieces in the Euphilia section in particular you want to, you want to tell us about? Any sort of history story pieces you've had for a long time, short time? I would say this one here, yes. it's a little bit unusual because it's yeah. half and half almost and then just the color variation in it is quite different. Absolutely. It's got some gold, got green uh, and green and gold on the, on the anchors and then uh, some purple model through it. Just um, It just doesn't know what it wants to be, yeah, does no. it? <laughs> it's it's all, all sort of confused. Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde happening there. Yeah. Um, some of the other pieces here that's pretty cool is um, this yellow one was originally one. We fragged it and now it's three. Oh, wow. The uh, yellow model there. And yeah. it's, it's not just yellow model. It's got gold stems with a yellow model through the solid purple. And, and that one originally came from Uncle Lamb. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So that was a great Fisher figure. Friends represent. No, it looks great. And the fact that, I mean, if you frag that into three and they're all looking that happy and healthy mm. now, it's, that's a great sign of healthy coral, which is, yeah. which is what we all want to see, which is incredible. Yeah. And then the other one that's kind of a favorite too is this one here. It's not quite a yellow, but it's quite toxic. And you can see probably about six or seven kind of different colonies of it. Yeah, definitely. And they all came from a very good reefing friend of ours, Pendy. Yes. When Pendy shut down his tank, he was like, look, take this. And he had Amazing. grown one head into this huge colony in Amazing. his tank. Yeah. And when we got it, because it was so big, we couldn't fit it in here. We ended up fragging it. And now they just kind of dotted throughout the tank. But just, <laughs> yeah. got these toxic pieces everywhere. Yeah. And I mean, as you say, we say about them being toxic green, but um, the stem is toxic green. The head is, is a yellowish. It's yellow. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's as green and gold as um, you're gonna see, and it's because it's two really vibrant colours. Despite the fact that they live in a um, sea of ultraness, they still stand out, which is is absolutely saying something. What about this piece down here, which has got? Is that one piece with? That's one piece. Yes, it's got some like. It's almost got two and two separate heads Correct. there. It's, it's, and then it's also your... it's got some gold specks throughout it. It sure does, yeah. And that one from memory was from Coral Madness. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah beautiful piece. So yeah, so a lot of LFS stores in Australia has contributed <laughs> to this. Wherever collection. the good stuff yeah. is, you'll find Michael and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also really like this uh, long extension piece here that's got um, some deep green stems and then you've got some purple on some yeah. bits you've got some gold on some bits and just the the fact that it's stretching out just gives it a real uh, contrast particularly against some of the, the rose gold hues through here and um incredible pieces it is hard to go past that ridiculously yeah, yellow just piece keep coming back to that one absolutely crazy crazy nice now there's there's a lot more in this tank um, and i don't want to brush past anything too quickly you've got We've got uh, some blasto colonies down here, yeah? Yeah, blasto. Blasto. Yeah, the massive got head. Massive, massive. You've got bower bankies that are um, just nothing shy of a uh, high end. This piece here and its, and its frag are just So those were from next Peck level. Waters too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ridiculously nice bower bankies. A coral that, funnily enough, I don't think it's um, the attention it deserves in Australia. I know overseas people love their bower bankies, but I don't mm. know if it's really taken off in Australia no. as much as it has overseas. So watch this space in uh, this land. But um, you've even got some uh, firework clove polyps there, giving them plenty of space so they don't <laughs> grow onto the skeleton of any of these crazy nice euphilias. You've got some torch up here too, which it's got its own rack full of torch there. Some uh, You've got some gold tips, you've got uh, some gold stems, you've got these, this quite cool here with the uh, green yeah, the variation. Sort of stem. Like there's so many variations of torch in there. You've got uh, pink tips, yellow tips, blue tips, just ridiculous. And I only just noticed this hammer here too. Wow. It's a little bit different too. Definitely. Very, very nice. And yeah, I mean, that gold stem on that uh, with the teal. Oh man, they contrast nice. So, so nice. Very, very nice. But we do have to keep rolling because um, you got a little bit more you can show us. Um, should we go? Should we go across or should we go down? What do you think's gonna? 
Oh, we can go down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to Scully Town because, um, I mean, if your sump doesn't look like this, are you even reefing? <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Joe have got what has to be one of the most ridiculous collection of scullies I've ever seen. And they, they sit in your sump. What, what the hell, man? <laughs> so that was an evolution to it. We tried them in different parts of the tank. Yes. And the fish just kept picking yeah, at it. Yeah, okay, yep, yep. And it was, uh, that was the next best place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, you could have the world's highest end sump and it's not going to hold a candle to this because holy heck i mean I, i'm on the verge of having to beep words out here have a look at the scully in here from um this big double head guy through to this one keeps standing out to me with that uh, like half gold with the uh, red veins through it. it's ridiculous got some really nice ufos there with like golds and reds and just little I mean, they're not bounces, but they're just like teal splotches on them. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, maybe I should stop trying to point ones out. Have a look at this green and gold there, the Aussie Spectacular, this like solid gold here with more red veins. I don't even know where to uh, begin, man. It, this one here too, just this, that color combo there, the purple and the gold. And it's like a four leaf clover. Yeah, almost. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just not enough room at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? There's heaps of room. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the, this guy back here too. The the red on the like underside yeah. of the skirt of him is ridiculous. So so many high end scully in um, in one sump of all places. Is there any in here that uh, have particular stories or histories or um, anything that uh, you'd like to cover? I would say this piece here, just because of how unusual it is. Yeah. And we've had it for a long time. And definitely. That, yeah, and that came from Uncle Lamb too. Then. <laughs> Lamb's so, got the yeah, goods, no, definitely. He definitely brought the goods. <laughs> Incredible. Look at that, uh, that absolute export master grade stripe piece there. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, just uh, the contrast of the colours of that. That is such a vibrant red, blue, green, all splattered throughout. Even like you got this solid goldy orange guy there, just ridiculous number of ridiculous scully. It's um, it is a lot to take in. I mean, on estimate, how many scullies have you got in there? Oh, that's a good question. I actually <laughs> wouldn't know. <laughs> Lost track. Yeah. I mean, on a quick count, let's have a look. We've got, if I look, if I look count across there, we got roughly ten by about. 30 rows, roughly 300 scully in a section of the sump on a very, very quick count. But, <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I would struggle to find one there that I wouldn't say is off the charts. They are all ridiculously beautiful. It's a to die for scully collection. Just, um, yeah, mind blowing. And these, these are lit up showing their colors from some uh, Kessels A360X there. You find they work well with the scullies? Yeah, I find it's more of a gentle light. Yes. Um, and I find that if it's too bright, then it kind of washes out their color. Yes. And one of the things we've noticed with the scullies too is over time they change a lot. Yes. So if you can keep everything right, the colors just reward you. Um, sure. You wouldn't think that in an LPS, but scullies yep. is one of the ones that over time have changed a lot. Yeah. Like we've got some scullies that were just your standard bleeding apples yep. and over time, different slashes of color Amazing. come through at it. Amazing. So yeah, very rewarding. So what you're telling anyone out there that's a Scully uh, fan needs to go and get 300 Scullies and their stuff <laughs> like this. <laughs> Just to encourage extra colors coming out of it. <laughs> that's, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty. <laughs> and I guess in Australia too, we're lucky. It's, that's, yeah, yeah Scolamia so, Australis. Yeah, yeah, uh, so. we, we definitely have access to um, the world's best Scullies in, in um, yeah. In my opinion, no. and I think it's probably a fairly general consensus. So um, it is good to see uh, represented here in Sydney, Australia, some of the world's best scullies all in one place, which is really cool to see. Yeah, nice, nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I probably should take a minute to catch my breath after looking at those scullies, but we can't. There's more to see. Um, actually, before we do, some of the fish have just come up here to... Um, to, to say hello. They've been laying pretty low, but they got curious while we were uh, looking down there at the scully. You've got a number of fish in the system here. The, I mean, the first guy that stands out to me is that gigantic blue tang. He's a beast of a unit. Yeah. <laughs> we got him as 
probably like a 20 cent piece. That was yeah, one wow. of the fish that we got and it's yep. been throughout all the, I think when we were changing systems and tr there was a number of times we were thinking, look, let's sh just shut down because yep. trying to move this. Happens to us all. Yeah, yep. Yep. with my wife um, pregnant, two kids. Yep. It was always just too much, but it was Life actually happens. the, yeah, it was just the fish that actually kept us going yeah, because yep. it just couldn't bring us to give them away. No. No, yeah. that's it. They become members of the family. And, 100%. Um, yeah, and it, I can completely uh, understand the challenges of um, work life, home life, family life thrown into the mix with reefing life. Yeah. And um, on a scale like this, I can only imagine the challenges. But I also know the rewards. And oh. um, standing here today, I mean, you're obviously you're reaping the rewards of what this beautiful reef has um, on offer. So, I mean, it's fantastic to see. Do you name your fish by chance or you, or you don't? No, no. It's, <laughs> it's uh, just blue tang. Yeah, I mean, there's an Achilles tang there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. see him just there. He's gone a little bit shy with the camera pointed at him. Fair enough. Yeah. Got a nice fox face there too. But all the fish, a... we haven't picked up any fish, I would say, in the last two years. It's yeah, all okay. just carried over from These system guys, to uh, system. Yep. And so you keep fish, obviously, because you enjoy the fish, uh, as the, they are family members. Yeah. But do they add anything beneficial to the systems as well? A bit of organics or a bit of cleaning? or Organics, a bit of um, picking on the algae. Yep. But yep. if you ask me, first and foremost, a coral guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Oh, I can appreciate that. <laughs> and the fact that you had to put 300... Um, export quality scullies in the summer <laughs> so, because of the fish. I, I can appreciate that. But uh, you've got, I mean, powder blue there. You've yeah. got uh, Hawaiian coal, I think. Yes. Some crazy nice fish in there as well that are just, um, to be fair, probably playing second fiddle from the, <laughs> from the crazy corals. But nice to see some cool fish in there. Now, if we come across here, maybe we'll start with these baskets up the top here. I noticed just a... Um, Blue gig chilling in this basket here. Yeah, so that was, so we've got another tank in the um, office there, which was uh, gonna be a display. Yes. And just being a coral hoarder, that's now turned into a holding <laughs> tank for more corals. So, Even but more. eventually this will get freed and then make its way there. Sure thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And how's it fine living in the basket? Is it yeah, no, it's it? going really good. <laughs> There's a NEM somewhere in there. Classic. Uh, but yeah, no, it's doing really well. It's yeah, super happy. Very nice. And then he's, you've got some more NEMs and carpets next to this one. Is this another Magnifica uh, or it's a different type? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think it is a mag, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a smaller one. Smaller yeah. mag, yeah, looks yeah. the goods. Nice, nice. And then these baskets up the back here, you've got a nice little Rodactus collection in this first one here. Yeah, shrooms. Some cool pieces in there. Yeah, yeah but yeah. mainly just disc of homers. Yes, yep. yep, for sure. And then uh, across a Rick here, basket. a Rick basket. And yeah. it's, it's a pretty solid Rick basket at that. I know we've got even more Ricks to come, but uh, this one's loaded up with all sorts of different types in there. I do love to see a Ricordi when you get all of those variants like that. Um, they just really complement yeah, each other no, so it's nicely. Just every single color of the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then speaking of Ricks, you've got some bigger pieces down here on the base. Have a look at some of this guy, that guy. The color of him is, um, very, very bright indeed. Crazy nice pieces. You've got some really, this one here's got bright uh, skirt on it. Just like uh, that one there, the uh, red center, then a purple ring with the uh, vibrant Toxic green. Base, yeah. yeah, really standing out. And then you've got this uh, uh, lemon lime solid. Oh, and there's our little uh, powder blue. Come and have a look at this. Beautiful piece, yet more hammers down there. Craziness. All right, let's move on to the second half of tank number one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, it, it must be almost lunchtime. We've, we've been here a long time. Let's, let's keep rolling. Let's see what else you've got here. Now, let's have a look at these racks here. For starters, are these, are these something you've made? These are, these are cool. I love the way these are designed to just clip onto the brace there. It's a really good story behind these racks. Yeah, awesome. So for a while, whenever we did an ICP, yes. there was always just weird metals coming through. Right, right. And this was big going on for about three or four months. Yes. And then during that time, we lost so many oh, corals. Oh man, <laughs> I would hate to think what you'd lost in systems like this. And we would go and look through the pump. Yes. Or we'll look into the waymakers for everywhere sure. you normally look. Of course. Couldn't find it. But yep, then yep. every time we did an ICP, the metals cre crept up a little oh, bit more. Oh yeah, yeah, ominous signs. <laughs> <laughs> and then lo and behold, because we have so many corals we were using these, <laughs> it was all from the mag racks. Yeah, yeah. And it was just the joins in between, For and it sure. was actually the more expensive 
yeah, mag rats. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't, get to say, were, yeah, doesn't yeah, discriminate. No, 100%. And they all just busted wow. at the seams and they were just leaching metals. Ouch. And then after that, that was actually in the previous system and it was one of the reasons why it didn't do very well. Yes. We then contacted Adrian Yap. Yeah, my man, Adrian. He is so good with this kind of <laughs> 3D stuff. printing extraordinaire. Yeah, yeah. So he made us these and yeah. they just clip onto the egg crates. Sensational. So yeah, you've got these just slide over the bracing. You've yeah. got a nice little cross brace there to give it some strength and then just goes in the egg it crate. Just, yeah. And then you can literally, I mean, you've got an arm on each end. You can make them as long or as short as you want. And, Correct, um, yeah. And they can just slide along that bracing. That's awesome. And then even this week, we made a drive out to his place twice just yes. to pick up more. So, we can... <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, you're doing good things, mate. Keep yeah. it up. All right. Yeah. Well, now that we've got the uh, history of the uh, these uh, excellent little frag racks that are obviously not going to leach any heavy metals into your system and not cause you any more coral loss, which is always a win. Tell us about some of the pieces on here. We've got goni frags galore. Yeah, there's some really nice gonies. I think they're called amaze balls or something yes. along those lines. Yep. This is a big glitter from Shane. Yep, lovely. Shane Danger. Um, and then these ones here are from NYX. So they've got, I think, these amaze balls that we picked yeah. up at Restock. Nice, yeah. yeah, you had a fantastic assortment of amaze balls there at, um, at Reefstock. So, I mean, this rack, if you've got things from Australian icon Shane Danger Coleman and uh, from Nix, it's, it's a Queensland represent <laughs> um, rack there with some beautiful uh, Goniapora on there. Then we've got uh, some all time staple there. You've got some Green Star polyps. You've got, yep. what's this? This soft coral here. That's I'm not crazy. I'm sure what it is. It's, it came on a, a live rock. And yes. then we just took it off and then it just continued to grow. So I actually don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. As someone who, to be fair, I'll say that I don't want to say I turned my nose up to soft corals early on in my uh, reefing career, but I, I definitely did not give them the time of mm. day that they deserve and starting to appreciate them now in the uh, later years of my reefing yeah. uh, career, seeing uh, soft corals everywhere I go that I have never seen before okay. always blows my mind. Okay, so um, yeah, that's awesome to see. Okay. And then we've got some um, clopolis here that are slightly different too. So yeah, kind nice. Of different tinges. They've got uh, some yellow stripes on them instead yep. of the uh, usual sort of green center with the pink. Yeah. I mean, you can see there. Yeah. So are these ones called candy corns or candy something corn, like that? Candy corn, I think. Yeah, yeah. yep. And it's just interesting the growth rate yeah. of different clopolis. Yes. Because these ones over here just yes. explode. Like yeah. Just, yeah, the fireworks ones. I mean, one they go like that fireworks. attached to something, they would go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that used to be an elegance coral and then it just kind of took over, so... <laughs> now it's a fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas these ones, it's um, a lot slower. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's funny, you would think the same species would be kind of similar growth patterns and whatnot, but um, just goes to show the never-ending uh, variance of no. <laughs> things in this hobby. And then coming across onto uh, your next rack here, you've got yeah. some more of the aforementioned uh, fireworks clove polyps. Is this... This is nice, this chalice. Uh, Space Invader Chalice. Space Invader Chalice, yeah, that's a cracking piece. Look at that, beautiful. You've got some gorgeous, uh, look at the little chalice frags next to it. This um, this guy here with the uh, gold eye with a little glint of uh, green in there, nice gold rim around it. And then, yeah, these ones on the, on the frag tiles here, some absolutely stunning rainbow chalice. And then, oh, I nearly went past it. Nice little, uh, little Aiken or Micro Musa. Yep, that's from um, Monsoon. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and I know you um, did a video there recently. Definitely, yeah, yeah, big shout out to the team at Monsoon. They're doing incredible work and awesome to see their amazing corals uh, making it to facilities like this, which is cool <laughs> to see. But um, let's let's keep going, man. You've got sure. even more. Dude. <laughs> We're still on tank one. It's, um, it is hard to believe, but we've come into a uh, world of dash here. And uh, you've got some nice assortments here. And this guy here, I really like him. That's a, that's a bright red. Yeah. Uh, the red on him with those nice deep purple stripes on him, gorgeous. Then you've got like a bit of a glittery striped red there. You've got the nice dark purple with gold spots on him. Another nice war paint there. I love the way his mouth is just like toxic yellow. Beautiful dish. And then one of the smallest dash I've seen. That's, that's a cute little guy there. <laughs> he's, he's just doing his thing there. You've got even more recordia here. Some real nice showpiece recordia in there too. I love uh, this guy here it, with like a yellow base to him with uh, that gorgeous rose pink uh, polyps on top. Always do love these ones with the uh, red ring with that nice purple uh, sort of center to them. Yeah, they're from Oceanarium. 
Yeah, over in yeah. WA. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he has some amazing ricks. They just, have some yeah. just crazy, crazy stuff, full stop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's really nice. And yeah, I mean, they've been in the game for a long time yeah. over there. So I do like seeing when they have their um, weekly specials and they put some different uh, oh, pieces up on yeah. there. Some of them are just so cheap. <laughs> I'll be sure to put a link in the description for people to track down the recordia like that uh, to get into their own systems. And then tell us about some of the pieces up the back here. These are um, these guys are nice. These gold with uh, red rims. They're a five year, is that right? Lemon and lime. Lemon and lime mm -hmm. five year. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, you got, they, I mean, they're growing out of control. They're growing onto your frag. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, that's a very fast growing Fabio. And a nice Fabio at that. So if it grows fast, happy days. And then um, I, I was going to move over to the left, but I, I can't take my eyes away from this ridiculously long couple of frag racks up there with such a huge assortment of blastos on there. You can tell that we went through a blastos phase too. <laughs> that was another one of the uh, addiction phases. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it looks yeah. like you fed the addiction well because, mm. uh, wow, there's some stunners along there. Look at the colors and variants. Uh, I'm going to struggle to point some out because they're all worthy there's of one a mention. Here, that one. We got that one from Shane from Reefstock too. Yeah, nice. That, one just... that big center guy. Yeah, yeah that yeah, big yeah. center one. Yeah, he's, he's a beast there. Really nice piece. Quite a few of these are from Monsoon. So yes. They've got these. They do some good blastos yeah, there up at Monsoon. They've got their clockwork ones and things. Um, yeah, really, really nice. I quite like these. I don't know what they're called, but they're sort of- Tigers. Kind of, oh, I was going to say a tiger okay, stripe. Okay, yeah, okay, sometimes yeah. the name makes sense. Sometimes it's so left field, you never know. But beautiful pieces. And um, they just go on for days. They're crazy, crazy number of gorgeous blasto. And then I noticed another coral that's dear to my heart, the uh, Space Invader Pectinia here. That looks a treat there, man. You've got really nice uh, big yellow eyes on that one. Looking very good. You've even yeah. got like a bit of a two-tone green going on with it, which is cool. Started off as a small frag. It's a yeah. fast grower. Yeah. But it, and also it's very aggressive. It's uh, <laughs> everything around it just gets done like that tomorrow. So. It has to have almost the most amount of real estate yeah. or like no man's land around Correct, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, saying, it's only the Zoas that are coming up onto it. And um, maybe, maybe we should talk about the Zoas. You got to, you know, I believe there's actually tiles under there. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we just lost control. <laughs> <laughs> the Zoas claimed their territory, yeah. and uh, man, there, there's some assortments in there. Actually, don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just going to keep growing, marching forward. So it's just yeah, craziness. Any viewer out there has ideas on how that should be approached? Let us know in the comments below. Because man, <laughs> I mean, I know how small tiles are. There's probably a few hundred tiles under there. Um, and you cannot see ceramic anywhere. <laughs> in fact, you can't see the egg crate even. <laughs> it is just Zoa head after Zoa head. What an incredible carpet of Zoas you've got there. Just um, ridiculously off the charts. And I also just noticed these elegance too. You've got a couple of the dark elegance there, the deep purples, this one yeah. with uh, pink tips, and then this guy with the yellow, yellow tips. tips. Yep. In fact, they're almost sort of a raster-ish there. He sort of almost fades into a bit of green and then goes yellow at the mm. tip. Very, very nice. Got more recordias up the back there. And then we go on to some A-cans. Yep, a few A-cans there. A few A-cans, some more chalets too hiding in there. I see more space invaders, more golds with blues. A Raja Rampage there. Oh, Raja Rampage, my apologies. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Actually, you've just pointed out something to me that I must admit I did not know. I had always assumed that uh, space invader chalice and uh, Raja Rampage were the same, but there's yeah, some differences there. But, but once there, you yeah. see it, this one doesn't have the black ring. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. She's, she's just green and um, gold. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, so the Raja has got the, uh, the purple bleeding out, which, I mean, I, I've always known the two different names, but I, I've always just gone, yeah, they're gold and green chalice. But uh, no, there's a difference. And then you've got hidden this nice, uh, just hiding under that rack there. That uh, Yeah, so that's the one that you saw the frag of earlier yeah, with, with the multicolored eye, yeah. yeah. The little glint of green in the eye, beautiful. Yeah. I am look forward to the day that they can get a bit more light and space once the Zoas <laughs> have been moved on. It's, once uh, a little, little bit that's more real a project estate. and a goal, yeah. <laughs> Classic. And then I also noticed this ACAM on the far left of that um, that rack there, well, that's a stunner, mate. Yeah. Very, very nice indeed. And this um, Blastos is quite different. I think Beautiful. Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. He's got a very nice colored center with very nice contrasty red. Just craziness. And it just flows for days into those <laughs> Blasto frags there that are, they, I must admit, they all look great too. They're all nice and fat and fluffy and 
just doing what they should do, which is it was great to see. It's, it's obviously not easy in a system this big with this many competing corals to have things looking as healthy as they are. No, so um, kudos to you and the, and the work you put in. And these systems are ridiculously clean for uh, the amount of coral in there, which I know doesn't happen overnight. I know you've been working hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you and Joe have been working hard to have these tanks look good, but uh, credit to you because they look very, very nice. I mean, you could eat dinner out of these. They are stunningly clean, um, nicely done. Is there any, I mean, we do have a basket of ricks to talk about at the end there, but before we do get to that, is there any pieces in this half of the tank that uh, you've got stories or anything you wanted to share about? I think overall it's not a specific coral, but a group of corals. Sure, yeah. And that's a Rix. Yes, nice. So have always loved Rix. And yes. in all of our systems, we've tried having a collection of Rix. Yes. But what I've found is we'll have them for about six to 12 months. Yes. And then they'll just melt one oh. after the other, one after the other. Oh no. And online, I think there's a forum on reef to reef in terms of some kind of bacterial thing. Yes. But it happens all the time where their mouth starts to get a little bit tight. Yes. Then they start to spit out kind of black goo. Right. And then within two or three weeks, it all just melts. Wow. So we actually had this happen in the system. Yes. Um, and then for the first year, for the first six to eight months of the system, it was a continual issue. We'll add a few ricks mm -hmm. and then within, they'll do really, really well within a little bit of time, two to three months, they'll then start melting. Oh, wow. And we had other just random death. You'll have corals that are just doing really, really well. And then other corals that would just melt. And what we ended up finding was it was a bacterial issue. Right, yeah, which I mean, it's so hard to find. I mean, you, you can test parameters, you can send ICP off. Oh. You can, bacteria is not something that this is very easy to identify. It's... No, and, and kind of early on, like I thought bacterial may not be a thing. It was almost like an excuse that you weren't like <laughs> trying to find out. Yeah. Just, maybe you weren't testing well enough. Sure, yes. Maybe you weren't doing correct maintenance, yeah. sucking out yeah. the detritus. And I just kind of brushed it. Yes. Um, and it was only until after doing, literally we were doing ICPs on the tank every three or four weeks. Nothing was coming up. And I was listening to a podcast from Reef Builders. Yes. And they were talking about Jake Adams mm -hmm. doing some kind of bacterial yeah, I remember treatment yeah, yeah. of the tank. Yes. So that led into one thing to another to another. <laughs> Down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and then eventually what I tried was putting Cipro in the tank. Yeah, right. And super careful around Cipro oh, because antibacterial, uh, just, you know, what it can lead to. Yes. But literally when we put it into the tank, it, the um, change was overnight. Wow. I've never seen such a big effect yeah, on a tank yeah. that Cipro had. Wow. And within three days, everything turned around. Amazing. And after that, I think we've only lost one rick and it was kind of hanging on. Sure. And apart from that, it's like everything's recovered. Amazing. Even before then, we lost random hammers. Yes. Torches here. Yes, yes. There's only a fairly small collection. And it's because of all the other ones that had died. So any Euphilia ricks, Generally LPS, if you've done ICPs, you've tested the water and it hasn't shown anything, it could be bacterial. Could be bacterial and I've experienced definitely. it first, yeah, yeah. firsthand in, in on this tank. So Amazing, yeah. yeah. And since then, the good thing is we've been able to keep Ricks and yeah, yeah. love Ricks, you know, so many different colors. But before sure. then it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, right. Now, for those much like myself that don't know much about Cipro, mm. you mentioned that it, obviously there's a lot of care, goes around a lot of caution. You need to be, it's not something you just dump in the tank no, and uh, go with it. Where can people go to have a look and, and read a bit further on that? There's a lot of articles on Reef to Reef. Yes. Um, reef Bum yes. has a series of different talks on it. Beautiful. Um, and then there's another really, really good one called Kung Fu Corals. Okay. And I find the guys in the US are actually yep. quite a few steps ahead yeah, of us. Yeah, very advanced with it, yeah. So those three sources, do your own research. Yes. I think don't, if there's issues, don't just put Cipro no, in the tank. No, no, of course. It but needs I to think, be a last resort, basically. Correct, yeah. Yep, yep. Do your ICPs to make yes. sure that it's not some metals contamination or something else. Sure. Regular testing. And there was periods of a tank of this size. Yes. I was changing water every night. Oh man. So I'll put the kids to sleep <laughs> oh. and I'll be here until two or three o'clock oh, when water changes from like a single 25 litre bucket. Oh mate. And it got to the point where How it was actually- How are you not in a wheelchair? You <laughs> must be killing. And it was actually to a point where I was actually 
considering throwing it all in. Yeah, I'm we're, considering throwing it in for you. That, yeah, no, because <laughs> a lot we of tried work. everything. Yeah. We were losing corals and it oh, just wasn't man, going anywhere. Yeah. And then kind of going then down that path and like, okay, maybe it is bacterial. Yes. And when we tried it, it was just, yeah. So Incredible. I would go down that path. I would do a number of ICPs, yes. water changes, eliminate yes. any other issues. Of course. And if you, and if it's still happening and yes. it's, and, and it's not those issues, then look into Read into it, go yeah. from there, yeah. yeah. I mean, it yeah. makes sense that America is advanced in the space. I mean, for uh, here in Australia, for those who don't know that are watching from home, particularly from watching from other countries around the world, may not be familiar that in Australia, we do not import coral. We, we, we get coral from Australia only, yes. where places like America, obviously, and, and a lot of other countries can import coral from anywhere in the world yep. or a lot of places in the world. So 100%. you're taking living animals, um, specimens from different, uh, different biotopes, different uh, waters, uh, access to different bacteria, obviously. So that melting pot's obviously gonna create more issues or more common issues, I guess, in, in the bacterial space. So it does not surprise me that yeah. uh, a reefing nation like America is leading the way in, in finding solutions to that, which um, obviously we're not immune to the problems here. No. It's probably just a little less frequent. So um, big shout out to my American friends who are, uh, who are leading the way there for us, which is good. And um, amazing to hear that, uh, yeah, I cannot imagine what it's like doing water changes like that no, every no. night. Yeah, and the fact that you're inside. still here with reef tanks is um, a testament to the work yeah. you do. And I'm um, so glad to hear that uh, in this instance, Cipro was the solution and um, mm. kept, you, kept you in the game, which is yeah. amazing. Yep, no, yeah. definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Recordia, and uh, now that you can keep them after uh, uh, addressing those bacterial issues, you've got just a, um, a just lazy a basket addition, yeah. of them, just uh, all sitting on top of each other. A little bit of rock rubble in there and uh, just recording it for days. Yeah, well, the actual plan is to now get another tank. So <laughs> <laughs> once the missus lets me and then we're gonna have that as a Rick tank and just- Just yeah, Rick's, yeah, yeah crazy. Well, be, yeah. I mean, you could stock that in, in half an hour. <laughs> the stuff you got here and it'll give you 5% of the room back in your storage tanks out here. But um, no, you got some nice pieces. In it. Like in that basket, there's there's so many recordia in there and some real nice pieces in there from solid oranges to uh, some greens and some blues, some pieces there that are just uh, doing their bit to get uh, some sunlight there or some light from the, the um, AIs up here. But, uh, and then obviously we've had a look at some of these pieces along the uh, front of the tank here. We've got uh, more ricks there. That one up there is one of my favorites, the uh, purple bright one. And then yep. there's more down here. <laughs> <laughs> there's a recorder here everywhere and then there's more up here so um yeah definitely well represented in uh in this system here so i think a recorder only tank would be from from this selection of stock would be something pretty special to see okay. so uh, be sure to let me know when that's up and running okay. <laughs> i'll be back but i mean we've talked a while now about this incredible custom sorry you said it was it was a 13 feet 13 feet made made by bespoke yeah. bespoke made custom 13 foot reef tank utilizing another two and a half by two and a half feet of sump space for a ridiculous number of scully but it doesn't end there you've got more systems on the other side of the room we've got even more tanks <laughs> to address and uh, i wouldn't say these ones are uh, lightly stocked there's a little bit going on in here um can you tell us about this system here now i should also point out that um i'm here first thing in the morning and uh the lights have only just come on and um already there is, there is so little room left in this tank. It is chock-a-block. Yeah. What can you tell me about this system, man? What, well, for firstly, when did this, I mean, I'm assuming this system came along first? Correct, yeah. Yep. So this system and the SPS system came along first. Yes. And this was- This is a new kid on the block. Well, this was a very old kid, actually. Okay, yep, yep. yeah, you got so, Yeah, so it was sitting in the garage at yes. my parents' place. Yes. And we tried selling it, but just, no, fair no one wants an old and we hadn't cleaned it out and it was disgusting. <laughs> and the funny story about the Goni tank is whilst we were losing the corals to the bacterial issue and also the magrax, yes. one of our hypothesis was potentially Gonies were giving some kind mm -hmm. of coral mm -hmm. warfare that yep. was killing off all the other corals just because they're quite invasive too. Yes. So we thought, look, we should put them into a separate system. Now, sure. Knowing what we know now, those weren't the issues. No, no, but, but this it's... is how this tank came about. So we took the spare water box from um, the garage, yep. 
got it up and running and, and it just put yeah. a couple thousand goni in there <laughs> <laughs> well a lot of them was quite small but just yes. over time it's yeah <laughs> We've switched the flow off just so that um, you can get a rough view from the top down. But uh, imagine when that flows on, just how much of the, these things are swaying about. Huge extension, huge, huge numbers of gonies in here. And I mean, loosely broken down, you've got mothers on the base and frags at the top. But I mean, these frags are these these aren't frags anymore. Yeah. So we've got mothers to the left here. Okay. Yep. Um, and then everything to the right were frags, but now they've turned into mothers. <laughs> yes. And the ones up at the top are frags, but now they're turning into mothers They're too. just very large yeah. frags now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, any sort of uh, named goni is in here, isn't it? I mean, I, uh, there's so many in here, it's, it's ridiculous. From yeah. all your glitters to your, um, I think they like sunburst through to maze balls to any, anything out there you've got in here. <laughs> <laughs> crazy number of uh, gonies I even like this view from down here you can see through <laughs> just the, yeah, the they are, stretching yeah out. they definitely need more love it's just <laughs> anything underneath we're just losing to not having enough light so, yeah yep. yeah I can yeah. understand why I mean this is elbows out territory here they are all melting together to get some uh, get some light and some flow in fact i think even up at this end there was a couple of pieces that we, we've just moved out to get a little bit more light because they were getting smothered so you can see that they're uh. they're just hanging on there they'll get a bit more light at that end and they'll color back up before you know it but um i even love these big heads of this green one just reaching through the uh the sea of red down there big glitters there and then you've got a couple of cool um storm trooper clowns are they in there yeah so we've got two mocha clowns yeah, from nice. michael hoskins who yeah who's awesome. a reefing friend of ours yeah yeah he's a great guy yeah, yeah. so uh, when they shut down the tank yep. we um babysat them so yeah Brilliant. big hello to michael michael yeah yeah michael i think he's michael just, and alicia yeah michael and alicia just expanded their family i think yeah, 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 yeah awesome yeah. no that's great yeah. really nice couple of reefers so Cool to see their uh, legacy lives on with these clowns. And um, man, anything you tell me about all the gonies in here, there's, there's a crazy number of pieces in there. I think just, yeah, we've got different types of glitters. <laughs> there's like three different variants of the greenish silvery glitter. Yes. About three or four different types of the Infernos. Inferno, that was the name I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah, some amaze bores scattered throughout here. Wow. But I think, yeah, it's just trying to get enough room for them at the moment. That's really the thing. <laughs> Good thing you just had a spare water box yeah. in the parents' garage because yeah. it doesn't look like it's uh, being underutilized, that's for sure. Crazy number of goaties in there. And yeah, there's a good shot of those clowns. Well, there was until they saw the camera. The big, big female there, she's beautiful. Gorgeous specimen. Now, it's not just uh, gonies, I don't want to say just gonies. Um, it's not full of most ridiculous gonies anyone's ever seen. There are other things in this tank as well. Um, maybe we'll start up in the back corner here. We've got, uh, these are some high-end Zoa colonies. These are your mother colonies, I believe. Yes, oh, these are the mothers that we removed from the main tank, otherwise they were just <laughs> gonna get taken over. So these are the ones that you went, I don't want them to become just a uh, solid three foot uh, mat. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the ones that uh, we wanted to be kept in a spot where you could still access them and not get them overgrown. And but you um, can also see the more weedy ones are just starting to take over definitely, again. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. It's always the nicer ones that are slower growing. Of course. But man, there's plenty of nice ones in there. And then I can see that some of those have then eventuated over to frags over here that um, just to make sure that the mother colonies are, are carrying their weight. You're yeah. able to frag some every now and then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and get some beautiful pieces. Now, I'm the world's worst when it comes to Zoa names, so you're gonna to have to walk me sure, through some sure. of these. What have we got? We've got... Um, so we've got the Adonis there. Yeah, beautiful. That's, That's a that beautiful... Big yeah. polyp with the uh, real gold and purple through it. Really, yeah. really nice. There's some acid reflux there. Okay, is that that one with that bright eye? That's the one with the yellow frill in the yes. purple center. Yes, yep, yep. yep. Some Oompa Loompas. Right, nice, yeah, nice. Which is a green and then the orange fill. What are these blue with the yellow the eye? The AO eyes, they're gorgeous. They're yeah, very, very nice. different, yeah. Very different, like when you see a sea of uh, Zoas, they almost look like Favia heads instead. They're very, very nice. I have to admit, it's not easy for me to find a Zoa that um, 
that I'm impressed by these days. And those, those blue with the yellow eyes are stunning. Very, very nice. And they all look great there. I mean, <laughs> funny when you give them, whether they're in a, a solid mat like that or in the other tank or whether you've got them isolated on some tiles here, they're all looking great, growing out nicely. Particularly, as you say, those Adonis are big, healthy heads, looking really, really good. Yeah. It's actually funny with the um, Zoas. So me and my wife have this continual thing. And I would say, you know, with couples having arguments, this is probably <laughs> one of the in the top three arguments that we have, and it's how Zola should be fragged. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> so I'm a proponent of fragging the rock right, and the Zola, okay. so yes. it's faster to recover. Okay. But Joe wants to slice under it and yes. then glue the skin on, so then she can get a nicer finish. Hey, I'm in favor for it. Would you ever make the <laughs> You do what you can do them both ways, and yeah. whichever works works well. That's so. So all of these are frag. I mean, Joe does all the fragging, so this is wow, frag hey. by going under the, So that's why they're sitting so perfectly in the center, and it's yeah. If Joe does the fragging, then they get <laughs> fragged the way yeah, Joe correct, wants to do yeah. them. <laughs> that would be my advice. And looking at the results, who could argue with with the outcome? They look incredible. So. Um, Yes, sorry, Michael, I think you lose that argument, mate. <laughs> they look great. Now, I did just also notice these on the front here. We've got, um, these are, I believe, are these Holy Grail? Holy Grail. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful pieces. I'll see if I can get it from the top down. Yeah, Beautiful. so we've got these from Rare Reefs. Yeah, okay, yep, yep. yep. And only two, three polyps. And for an ACAN, they're actually very, very fast growing. Yes, yep. yeah, okay, yep. yeah. And then some of the ACANs we've noticed, they change or morph color over time. Okay. Um, if the light's too bright, yes. a lot of the rainbow ones turn orange and red. Yes. But these ones just keep their color, so For yeah. For sure. And speaking of uh, lights and infrastructure and stuff, is a good opportunity for me to say that uh, for those of you who are interested, we will be doing a completely separate video, probably, probably coming in the following week, going over all of the infrastructure across all of these systems and the uh, just the, the process and the work it takes to maintain a facility yeah. like this. So for those of you out there who are the gadget freaks and want to know the uh, lights, the flow, the sumps, we'll go over all of that in another video. But um, man, yeah, those those ACANs look great. The Zoas look great. And then what about this basket down in there? You got some treasures in there, man. Yeah, some rock flower in <laughs> Yeah, they're crazy nice. This is something that uh, we don't see a lot of in Australia and um, man, they're so beautiful. Yeah, so we got these from Reefstock again. And yeah, Mark cool. Pebbles. So yeah, Reef, Reefstock last year was uh, very, very good, yeah. <laughs> Not so much for the credit card. But, no, uh, no, terrible for the credit it was, card. It was good fun to unbox it. <laughs> now that's a beautiful tray and there's some cool variants in there like, um, oh man, I really like if I can get the camera to work with me, this uh, That yellow one with one the one orange, there. yeah. Oh, what a stunner. And uh, yeah, the pinks and reds and greens, that also, I uh, get my finger to show on screen, the gray with the sort of the pink frill is a nice one. And from what I know on uh, Rock Flares, not something I've experienced myself before, they're relatively easy to care for, they just... So hardy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, care, not so, but we haven't had them breed, so we thought okay. that we've had them... How long? It's been about a year almost. Okay. Yep, yeah, yep. and we haven't had any pups. Yeah. Right, right. Because I believe they actually breed asexually. Is Correct. That right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you've got, <laughs> there's no shortage of potential partners in there anyway, but they don't need yeah. them. They, they can actually reproduce on their actually, own. Actually, is... funnily enough, I don't know if you can zoom in. I actually spotted maybe a baby now. Oh, there is two on that bit that of rubble. Is, that's actually, I didn't even know that. <laughs> there you go. Hey, crazy. making things happen. Yeah. I'll get some footage of that with the uh, DSLR <laughs> so we can see the first pup of a uh, rock flower dam, that's cool. Very, very good. Now, there is even more on this rack that cannot be uh, glossed over because, um, well, we've got some really nice banana pora for starters, but uh, tell us a little bit about some of these uh, bouncer adactus you got on the uh, back left, or the back right, I should say, of that rack. Yeah, so bounce mushrooms, another phase that we went through. <laughs> so, as we had to collect all the different types of bounces, um, you've got your OG bounce. It doesn't, it doesn't come better than the, the OG, OG bounce. bounce. I mean, it's aptly named. Um, it is a nice piece, and you've got like a dozen of them there. <laughs> just... And the other thing about the OG is just super hardy. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we frag these over time. Yes. And they just frag so well. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's what you yeah. want to hear. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Nothing worse than something that's really, really beautiful, but it, you know, if you look at it the wrong way, it melts and dies on correct, you. Correct, correct. Yeah, <laughs> something which is that in the OG, which is, is good, yeah. It's hardy and it, it will repay your uh, investment, then happy days. But there's more than OGs. I mean, you've got a dozen OGs there, but there's more. There's uh, There's a lava bounce. Beautiful. 
and that's just a weed. That, yeah, so Gross these, fast. yeah, so we had on two rocks and we removed the rocks and there were leftover kind of just little foots. Yes. That got stuck to the rack and they've just grown out. So <laughs> down the bottom here, you'll actually see the mothers. Oh, there is more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so down there. Yeah, classic, yep, yeah, more yeah. growing down there. <laughs> Every one of these systems is multi-tiered. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you think there is no more coral, there is more coral. Yeah. So you've got the lava bouncer, and then what about these crazy things with these red bouncers on them? Uh, which ones? These guys up here. Oh, that's, that's the pride and joy in yeah. terms of, yeah. So this was from Reef Reflections. He had an auction on these. Yeah, fantastic. But just as a bounce with the multicolored in the bubbles, it's, it's oh. insane. Beautiful piece. Just in terms of the bubbles, I think there's like three, four different variants of the bubble colors. Amazing. And you've got a couple of those now, so you've been able to frag them or? Yeah, so we fragged once. Yep. Um, and it's actually fragged quite well. Excellent. Yep. Another, that's a big, <laughs> a big win when uh, no, yeah, high end pieces, you, yeah. you hope that the, they're going to be able to propagate and um, keep that love going. And uh, yeah, they're absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And you've got some, one I do know the name of, some sun-kissed bounce up in the back corner there. I think they're sun-kissed yep. bounce. Yeah, so these are the sun-kissed bounce. Yes. Yep. And then these ones here are the power ball. Ah, that's one I do not know the yeah, name of. Yeah, so right. the bubbles you can see are slightly variant They too. are too, yeah, yep. yeah. Man, that is a collection and a half of yeah. uh, bounce rodactus. <laughs> I know most people are super proud if they have one of any type of bounce, whether it be sun-kissed or if they're fortunate enough to have an OG bounce, mm. but uh, to see so many different variants and of decent numbers is pretty cool to see. Yeah. And um, again, they look like they're all doing really well, which is nice to see. Enjoying their life in the uh, goni tank here, just as our uh, clown here just enjoys her uh, mattress of uh, <laughs> high-end goniopora. Cool, cool system. So before we roll on to the next system, is, it, is there any secrets or tips you can share with us on how, how you've had a system like this flourish like that. I mean, that can't be just coincidence or, or just just luck. There has to be some sort of secret juice you're putting into this system to make it work. Yeah, um, there, there is one that's made a huge difference to keeping gonies. I yes. think for, ever since I started reefing, you would go to a store and see the gonies flowing. Yes. You'll bring that gonie home. It'll do okay for about six months. Yes. And then slowly just recede, sure. shrink, and then just melt I'm away. Sure, we've all been there, yes. <laughs> and it happens so many times. And if you read online, they talk about putting reef roids, mm -hmm, feeding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Oh, there's various stories. Some people say gonies live in silt. Some people say they need pristine conditions. Yep. Some people say they need daily feeding. Some people say never feed them. Yeah. <laughs> now, the one element that changed the game for us okay. was manganese. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, gonies just need manganese to mm -hmm. puff up. Yes. And I remember the first time we dosed it, they all just ballooned up. Yeah, wow. And the ones that had shrunken yes. and was not giving any polyp extension, Yes. the effect was almost instant. Wow. You put it in and it's also I think sometimes when your gonies are shrunken you do a water change and they puff up. Yes. It's just because in that, that new water they're getting them. A little bit of manganese yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. And the issue with the manganese too it's um, quite reactive I believe. So okay. once it's in the system after one or two days it's gone. So it actually like it just vaporizes out Correct. basically. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. So it's something that you will need to continually dose mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ever since we started dosing manganese into this tank yes it just Changed it. Changed the Gonies game. then became wow. so hardy, and it's actually very, very rare now to lose a goni. But yeah. before then, we couldn't keep them. Yeah, and wow. what? So what ended up happening? A lot of these came from our previous system, but because yes. we, we had so many gonies in the concentration, yes, they would just go one after the other, yeah, and they were wow. all just brown jelly eventually. Oh, heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, so you couldn't argue with the results. In here, yeah. No. So if there's anyone out there trying to keep gonies and they're all receding. A big tip is just, yeah, try manganese. Try manganese, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And yep. that is just to make sure people know out there, manganese, not magnesium. No, no, correct. Manganese yeah. is the element you want to look at there. And obviously that's something that's not easy to test for at home. So you need no. to uh, get a brand that you know and trust, yep. follow their dosing instructions and then follow that up with obviously yep. some ICP just to make Even sure. Even ICP testing on manganese. Yeah, like, challenge. Yeah, like it, because it just runs out. Yes. If it's actually, if 
if if you're showing manganese on ICPs, generally means that you're overdosing. Yep, yep. 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 I actually lo I like that a lot with a lot of elements where mm. you're dosing it, but you don't want to see it. Correct. That way, Correct. you know, whatever you're putting in is getting consumed or yep. is leaving the tank. You're not getting yep. a buildup of it. And manganese yep. is so yeah, manganese yep. is one of those ones where yeah, you just want to dose it with not ideally not see a trace of no. it. No, and um, you're like I've gone down the path of overdosing on so many metals. Like when I first <laughs> got into manganese with gonies. I just kept putting more and more because they just kept well, getting Well, when you see out. results like that. That's right. But I can human. tell everyone that if you do too much, it's very, very bad. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah human nature is a little <laughs> bit's good, so more has to be better. Correct. But yeah, uh, yeah often is not the case. No, but uh, no. if you can get that right balance, I mean, these are the results you can achieve. So yeah, yeah. that's a fantastic tip. Thank you. All right, shall we look at the, the final system in here and then maybe we can get a little sneak peek at your uh, previous display tank that's now become another <laughs> okay, okay, tank. Yeah. But before we go there, let's have a look at this back tank. All right, now there is yet another system in this room here and it's not a small system and it is not by any stretch of the imagination empty, even by your standards. No, <laughs> it is no. full to the brim and this is your SBS system yes. at the end here. What's this? This looks like a custom build tank. Yeah, so custom built eight foot. Yes. By bespoke. So yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. Fantastic. Now this is primarily an SPS system. Correct. Yeah, it's all SPS and Montes. Yeah, beautiful SPS Montes. I see a couple of clams in there too, though. Yeah. But, uh, wow. Full of goodness. You've got first thing I see up here is this beach bum Monty and, the, and yeah. th supposedly the mother down there. Yeah. Oh, you got that, two, yeah. two mothers down there. Holy moly. That's actually frags that's joined into one piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's the frag mother. <laughs> I do love when Monty's do that. And that seems to be a little bit of the theme you're going. You've got um, a lot of mothers and particularly Monty's down yeah, on, on down the base the bottom, down yeah. there. Just, this, man, that, uh, that, is it a chili pepper? That is yeah, bright. Chili. I've seen chili peppers before, but whew, that is bright. And um, yeah, then there's acros you've got. Pink digi for days up there with, Pink um, digis, yeah. <laughs> with just getting a little bit of air while the uh, return pumps off. Take us through some of the other uh, colonies and frags you've got in here, some named pieces, not named pieces. Some fireworks down the bottom here. Love the fireworks, yep, yeah. yep. First time I saw fireworks was um, on a, a guy's tank, Andrew Biggles, many years ago, and um, I'd never seen it before, and he had this beautiful colony of it just singing in this SBS display tank. Crazy, crazy nice, and um, it still puts a smile on my face to this day. Some of the other pieces here, this is an ASD milling. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Really nice polyps on it. See some red polyp Dallas next to it there. Red polyp Dallas, yep. What about this uh, piece with the purple? Oh, that's a rainbow loom. Rainbow loom, yeah, yeah, right. Very, very nice. I love just the sort of the toxic bleed out nature of it. Super, super cool. And then- uh, It's a peachy. Ah, yeah, beautiful. Not sure what name this is, Millie, but it's just with the coral goby just yeah. making home in there. <laughs> That's nice though, doesn't it? It's got really nice and it's super fast growing. Fast growing, yeah, yeah. beautiful, bright, bright green polyps on it with a, a nice sandy yellow sort of coralite. Stunning, and then yeah, you've got more colonies, SPS colonies. You got frags. Oh, this is a this blue polyp down there. That's a is that a pink Cadillac or very good? Yeah, that's a pink nice. Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. I'm always in intrigued by the name they chose for that. I don't know why that's called pink yeah, Cadillac. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no pink in it. <laughs> this one here is the Walt. That's the ah, iconic yep. Walt. Yep. Beautiful. And I love the way you've got uh, them lifted up just so they get a little bit of uh, a little bit of room. Yeah. What we found that was just some of the pieces are shading out others. It sure. was just, yeah, had to make room on the real estate. There's a really <laughs> nice piece up here, which is like a grafted. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I see that down there. Gorgeous. What about, is that another bit of fireworks in under the uh, Tunzi? Yeah, 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 yeah. So That's, fireworks notice they need a little bit lower light. Yeah, it's yeah. really singing under the pump. Yeah. There. <laughs> so it's the other ones shape. where just have a little bit too much light, it's just, yeah. Just doing its thing. I'll see if I can get some view from the front here just because uh, there's a lot to take in in this tank. There's colonies after colonies. And then when you see some more of these uh, Adrian Yap, uh, beautiful made uh, frag racks there, there's frags littered literally all around the tank. You've got them on the front here. Then you've got more along the back there, just like all of our other systems in this uh, room here. They are full to the brim and um, 
Yeah. These are legit colonies. Look at the size of this thing. That and is. they were all grown out from frags. Yeah, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. Man, this system must take a... Look at that fox face there. He doesn't like the look of the camera, but uh, what a beautiful fish he is. That takes that takes a bit of growing out. I know SPS is one of those things, once you get conditions right, they will they will flourish. And uh, these yeah. guys are obviously flourishing very, very nice. Also notice you've got some crazy nice clams in there too. These guys here, the teal splashes on him. And of course, as I wave the camera over, that poor guy's closed up. There's another one down here, just hiding in between some of the uh, mother colonies down there. Looking at an absolute treat. And more of the sea swells, we can see those yep. guys there rotating around, another uh, just uh, secret to the success, working a treat. But uh, any pieces in here in particular you want to uh, take us through? Uh, this one here. It's almost like a tri-color, um, but this one came from Pendy when he shut down his tank, yeah, and nice. he called it the Bandit Galaxy. He came <laughs> up with a Bandit Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Pendy self-made. And uh, it literally came in less than that big yep, yep. and then it's it, it's it's done well so it's good to have some of Pendy's legacies in, Absolutely. in the hobby. <laughs> it's good to see you've been able to grow it out and uh, it's looking a treat. This piece here is quite nice too I like the uh, sort of the the pearl essent uh, yeah. colors coming through there. There's like tips that are blue and yeah. yeah. That has a name to it I actually can't remember off the top of my head okay. but it actually yeah it has a has, has a pretty cool a name, name to it. Yeah. And for those who don't know, this is a very, was once a staple in the Australian SBS scene, which has the ironic name of Dallas, which is our um, bright green uh, mm. staghorn there. Now, believe it or not, it's not named Dallas because it came from Dallas. Um, it's because of the guy who uh, found it and named it. Uh, it was an Australian um, and his name was Dallas. So oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's actually used to be well in the <laughs> hobby scene. Um, back just before my time, okay. uh, just a couple of years before I got into it, uh, yeah. Dallas was yeah, well known in the hobby scene and um, that acro absolutely dominated Australian SPS tanks there for many, many years. And then because it was so fast and common and easy to grow, people sort of turned their nose up against it for a while. And I found in the last couple of years, Dallas is- you, you can't find it. You them. won't find yeah. it anywhere. Correct. And it Correct. blows my mind because my previous tank, I had like basically a three foot cube of it in the middle of my six yeah. foot display and like it would grow out of the water until yeah. it would die. Now Dallas is so hard to get hold of, and um, it's great to see you've got some good Dallas pieces in here, and it just looks for a green and how toxic it is. You just you can't beat it, can no. you? It's just no. such a iconic. Uh, it, it's for for Americans watching. It's fairly similar to a. Um, oh, I might be doing either of them injustice, but to a Bali Slimer um, yeah. um, is something you can kind of compare them to. But uh, it's yeah, just a real iconic green yeah. acro that. Um, does that's actually settle, a good point. Like, fast. yeah, like you don't find it at any store. You anymore. don't find it anywhere anymore, and it's yeah. such a shame because it's it's just a staple that every yeah. SBS tank should have. And I remember, I think it was Shane or someone literally growing it in a bucket. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. how hard it is. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. It's a, it's a beautiful coral that, um, yeah, grows fast, grows bright, um, is is a little bit more forgiving than some of your SBS. It has had a rep there for a while of being a little bit of a um, flatworm bug, yes. like a magnet. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you get flatworm in your, in your tank, it's the canary down the mine. Yep. It, it will yeah. show it before anything That's else, right. um, which in my opinion is another plus for it. You can mm. identify it very, very quickly, which is always good. But um, man, you've got some SBS in there. I even love these big, uh, pokey colonies you got <laughs> going in there, just just growing away. These things are, are well known for just spawning in systems and just growing. Correct, like every, yeah. Every surface like, known. Yeah. <laughs> now you got some. Uh, I think these are fairy light monties. Fairy lights. Yep, that's yep. right. Yep. Some smaller beach bums at the back. Yeah, there. beautiful. And yeah. then just yeah, frags, and we've actually just separated them out recently. I think the biggest issue is they were just all just fighting. Too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 SBS not a big fan of rubbing shoulders with each other, so. Um, yeah, a little bit of space for them is always good. You get some red dragon, fox flame, all the name pieces, Monty's. I don't know pokies. what name this is, but just the tips of it is. It's very bright, yeah. Very... I've got a small colony of that in my system and I okay. really like it. Yeah, yeah, I got it as a wild piece. And yep. um, yeah, the tips verge on yellow yes. um, with a really nice strong green base. Very, very nice to see. No, fantastic job. This looks like a bird of paradise down here yep. as well. Yeah, yep, gorgeous. No, they all look fantastic. Well, I should ask, how long has this one been running for? So all of the tanks have been running for a little bit over a year. Okay. So when our second was born, that's when we moved in here. Yes. 
Um, and he's a little bit older than one, so that's how I remember. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. As long as you're not yeah. using the tanks to remember your child's <laughs> age, you're using your child's age to remember the tank's age. Wow, for systems that are only a year old and the uh, amount of pieces you've got in here that are all doing well, that yeah. shows some incredible uh, stability in the tanks. So but I'll say out of all the systems, this has been the hardest one yeah. too. And people say in terms of stability with SPS, it is a thing. I just remember early on to get the phosphate and the nitrate in range, it would yes. just be one week nitrate will be up following yep. away with phosphate. And it's probably only in the last couple of months it's then started to stabilize. For sure. Yeah. And then also with new systems, like for a period of time, they just suck up so much calcium yes. or other elements like fluoride or barium, just Definitely. strange elements. Yep, yep. And then they soak up enough of it and they don't need any more. Yeah. <laughs> so then you keep dosing and then you overshoot the mark. So yes. that's what we found with the system. Yeah. Got to be really on, on top of that um, ICP, which, yeah, we'll get the job done. SPS, I mean, all corals can do it, but SPS in particular are so good at once they settle in and get happy, they grow and consume elements to the point that they will, they will kill themselves that quickly because they'll just suck everything out of the water and then get yep. upset and die. So yep. super, super challenging, particularly when you've got literally the amount of kilograms of SBS per litre yep. <laughs> in and, and a actually, system. So what happened was we upgraded to the new Orfex. Yes. And because the old Orfex were just starting to fall apart. Yes. Like pox were just, yeah, pox sure. were just um, dying out. And when we first turn on the new lights i put it on to the the, the the standard intensity yes and the amount of alk it was sucking up yeah. it was about 600 mils per day yeah wow well, yeah and it yep. was just growing too fast and it was just it was actually <laughs> stripping out so much in the system and then it yeah. went through another whole yes. period when it wasn't stable yeah yeah well the challenge is when it is stripping that much out yeah trying to keep stability through that oh, is near it's impossible correct. because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you let a container, dosing container run empty for one day, yep. the elk's gonna plummet. Yep. Or if, you know, just there's something in the wave maker or the, the corals just don't consume much that day, your elk's gonna skyrocket. And, yep. <laughs> and then so it was difficult. also the phosphate and nitrate was just always bottoming one or the yes. other. And we yep. bottom like, phosphate a couple of times and that's yes. terrible for SPS system. Definitely, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the SPS in particular do love to consume a bit mm. of nutrient and um, which is something that, I mean, it works great in display tanks after a few years when you've got corals yep. that are grown in, they kind of almost self-manage their nutrients. Yep. Yep. But when you're trying to start a new system off and put that many SPS in there, that's, that's yep. a heck of a tightrope to balance on. Yep. So yep. No, you've done well. And the other thing I remember when I first moved in here too was um, it was an issue in the previous system, but we had the flatworms. Yes. Yep. And when we first moved here, it was for a period of about four or five months. Yes. We just, every weekend, I was dipping every single coral in the Man, system. you've been through <laughs> a baptism of fire with yeah. these systems. You've done the hard yards. No, and then at the time with a newborn and then yeah, Joe, yeah. it was, yeah, don't want to go. So now like super careful, basically yes. no SPS touches this system. Yes. They'll go in the other systems. Yep. And only when they've been quarantined, they come here. Yeah, yeah. cool I'm too. never going through that again. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, that's the hard yards for sure. But yeah. uh, the results look great. You've done a great job there. Mm. All right, now, believe it or not, despite having all of those systems in the other room, you still have what was once your display and will hopefully one day one be day. a display again. Yeah. But uh, it has become an overflow for even more corals and <laughs> some crazy corals in here as well. Can you take us through this system and um, what you've got in here and um, some special pieces if you can possibly select a few to tell us about? Yeah, so, um, I mean, the thinking behind this tank is when we moved, so we had the big 13-foot and the 8-foot. Yes. So we needed somewhere to house the corals before we moved those tanks across. Sure, sure. So in the beginning, this was a holding tank for those corals. Yes. On top of that, eventually then it will become a display, so it will be nice for the office. Yes, But yes. you can see having... <laughs> <laughs> having hoarding issues so uh, now it's yeah i mean we went through a massive hammer phase sure. and also scully phase so, they, yeah. so these are the two that dominate absolutely yeah and i also noticed probably not the most exotic coral in here but these duncans here massive heads on them. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely gigantic heads on them and then um yeah some of the hammers in here i'll see if i can uh, view from the top down these are ridiculously nice hammers some real specials. I love some of that solid toxic green. This is glowing there. Then you've got uh, the uh, gold tip with the uh, darker green. You've got just some golds. You've got uh, some more of these uh, yellow tight uh, anchors on there. And then there's also, not that I want to move on from hammers too quick, but these are Cynarias here. There's a couple in there that are ridiculously nice, especially uh, 
this guy here is um, got some really nice color through him. Yeah, there's one that's um, a little bit more of a shade of yellow. Yeah, 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 absolute stunner. Very nice. And then yes, there are scollies as well. Of course there are scollies. <laughs> <laughs> and not just your run of the mill scollies. Have a look at some of these. Beautiful, beautiful pieces. Geez, they look nice and happy too. Stunners. Crazy to think that this is just the overflow. <laughs> You've got no shortage of pieces in there and um, that, that looks a treat. This is a big system too. This is a, is this a red? Cade. It's, it's a Cade. A Cade, yep. Yep. Yeah, a Cade yep. five foot. Big Cade five foot and it's um, yeah filled to the brim. Very, very nice. This is a nice piece. This, yeah. this scully here, it's got that real, it's just got rolls. It's that, it's that fluffy. Looks a treat. And this, oh, look at this frog spawn. That's almost more a torch. It's, it's the bullet extension is that long. Beautiful toxic model. There's a very nice gold that's just facing away from us there. Yep. Have a look at him from the top. That is nice. Very, very bright gold. Then you've got some more of these uh, yellow stem here with the uh, purple tips. Oh, that's a nice piece. It's so difficult for these hammers to uh, to be able to stand out when they're in a sea of standout pieces, but uh, some of them still manage to do so. All right, now in this system that is full to the brim of standout pieces that somehow is just overflow from the, the other <laughs> systems, is there anything particular in here that uh, you, you, you want to take us through or, or has a story? Yeah, I guess not a particular piece, but more so just the overall system. This is a system that's gone through the most. Yes. And um, from the time of bringing all the corals to moving it back out, mm -hmm. the other thing that I have noticed is what corals that you put into this system, it just consumes completely different things. Right, okay, interesting. So um, when we moved the SPS in here, they were consuming different things. Yes. And then eventually now we've got hammers. Before then we had gonies. Yes. So in terms of fluctuations, this tank has had the most fluctuations. Right, right, yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, having different corals in this tank over time, notice that different corals consume different types of elements. Yeah, okay, interesting. Definitely interesting. And man, some of these scollies again. This, uh, this little guy here, this little orange one with the yellow eye. Mm. <laughs> He's one of the smaller ones in the system, but. And the other one with the toxic. Green. Yeah, 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 that's a little bit different. Really? I mean, the outside is not, but the toxic mouth is Toxic's very different. Very, yeah. very bright, yeah. Stunners and then just, you know, absolute ultra export, bleeding apples, master grades and just scully after scully. And then, yeah, it's hard to get the color of that Cynaria there, but when you can see him compared to the uh, reds there, very much a showpiece. And that red in the back corner there, wow, he's fluffed Fluffy. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have seen actually the blue tang taking nips of the side. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, it does look tasty. I, I don't know if I'd want to eat it, but uh, if I was a fish, I would definitely give it a try. Uh, incredible. Well, thank you so much for uh, showing the excess, the spillover system, um, as well as all of your other incredible systems. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here and um, have a look at all these facilities, all these corals, just incredible specimens. As touched on, we will do another video going over uh, some of the infrastructure and some of the maintenance and uh, the parameters and things that you chase in those systems just so that you can get the success you do. And also talk about what's next for um, for your reefing journey, which also has a pretty uh, interesting and exciting story that I cannot wait to share with everyone at home. So um, be sure to stay tuned for that uh, video. And of course, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. In the meantime though, if there are any questions uh, for Michael or myself about any of the corals you've seen, be sure to pop it in the comment section down below. You know I'll personally reply and I'll be sure to, uh, anything that I can't answer, I'll send through to Michael and Joe and they'll be sure to uh, get onto that ASAP for us. But um, one more time, thanks again for uh, welcoming me into your home and um, allowing me to share all of these incredible corals that you have here with everyone at home. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure. No, thank you, Sam. Enjoyed it a lot. Cheers. Thank thanks. You. All right, guys, there you have it. What an absolute jaw-dropping collection that Michael and Joe have procured there. Some of the best corals I've seen anywhere in this country, and they're just stacked right next to each other, and then right next to the next one, and then right next to that. There is 
incredible coral for days there. And I know this video has been a long one, but to be honest, I could have filmed for hours and hours and hours. I wanna give a massive shout out to Joe and Michael for making it possible for me to get up to Sydney and check out and film this collection so I can share it with all of you out there. And of course, a massive shout out to all of my channel members who make it possible for me to get out in this country and check out these incredible collections and tanks that are scattered throughout this vast land that we call Australia. Now, I did promise in the intro for those of you who are interested in any, in any of the corals we saw throughout this video, particularly those in Australia that I would have a special announcement to make. I can now say that Michael and Joe are making this incredible coral collection available for purchase exclusively through the brand new local fish store opening up in Brisbane called Reeftopia. So if you're yet to hear anything about Reeftopia, I highly recommend you jump on their Facebook page. Make sure you like it so you can see all of the updates there. They will be having a grand opening soon. So stay tuned for that information because um, it's one not to be missed and you can trust that I will personally be there because it's not often that you get an opportunity to see corals like this available for sale, let alone this vast number of them. So I can't wait to be there for that grand opening and I hope to see you all there. Other than that, I should also mention that next week I'll have part two of this video where we go over some of the logistics and some of the reefing methodologies that Michael and Joe use in this incredible coral collection. And um, I know some of those details, some people absolutely thrive for, particularly those of you out there who are interested in the Reef Moonshiner program. There's some gems of information to come next week. So be sure to subscribe to make sure you do not miss out on that video. We are this close to 25,000 subscribers and I'd love to announce it's next week that we've hit that milestone. So if you've got two seconds of your time, I guarantee you'll cost no money whatsoever. Hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner. Other than that, guys, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video throughout its entirety. It's been a pleasure having you and I can't wait to see you next week. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers, bye.